This video is brought to you by Blessed Be God Boutique, maker of Catholic fashionable apparel, handmade accessories, and more. I've been wanting to present the prophecies of Sister Elena Aiello on this channel in the My We Were Warned series for a long time. For three, four years at least since I started this channel. But other things have come up, and I can only present We Were Warned videos infrequently because doing it too often will eventually oversaturate what I'm doing with this, and people will tune out. Her message here is important. You will see warnings of a coming material chastisement preceded by war and afflictions from heaven and all sorts of things that are meant to get our warning. You will also see or hear Our Lady referring to herself as mediatrix of all graces, mediatrix of men to God. And by God, she means her son. And I know many Catholics have a hard time with this because for some reason they still put any stock into anything that Francis says on a theological level when he chastised people for using the term mediatrix of graces. An odd thing to do, really, to take anything he says at this point seriously, but he, or rather, our, his predecessors, Francis's predecessors, numerous of them going back to the Middle Ages, used the term. It just hasn't been formally defined yet. One of the debates of the Second Vatican Council was actually to have a formal definition of Our Lady as Mediatrix of Graces promulgated by the Council. Those efforts fell apart. Anyway, what I have for you are the visions of Sister Elena Aiello and the messages of Our Lady and of Our Lord given to her in the 1950s and 1960s. Here's a note on her. In April 2011, Pope Benedict XVI approved the petition allowing for the beatification of Venerable Elena Aiello. She was declared blessed on September 14th, 2011, on the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross at 5.30 in the evening in Piazza dei Bruzzi in Concezza, Italy. The proclamation of the blessed was made by Cardinal Angelo Amato, Prefect for the Congregation for the Causes of the Saints, along with the Archbishop Cosenza Bisignano, His Excellency Salvatore Nunari. Somebody like this would not be elevated without the Vatican taking into account, without the Holy Office taking into account the alleged messages she received, her alleged prophecies and alleged visions. Keep that in mind. A, an elevation of a figure like this is a tacit approval of these messages. You're going to also hear words like soon these things will happen in, 19, in the 1950s and 1960s. And some will bristle, say, didn't come to pass. You're using earthly time frames. Heaven works on a different time frame. I doubt the passage of six decades is anything would be considered a long time period, according to the timetable of heaven, given that it works in an eternal timetable. I think Fatima was recently have in a heavenly time frame. Speaking of Fatima, think of the Fatima message when you hear this. Sister Elena Aiello's prophecy, Good Friday, April 16th, 1954. Upon initiating the usual sufferings, upon the hour of 1 p.m., Jesus appeared to me, covered with wounds and bleeding, saying to me, Behold, my child, see to what end the sins of man have reduced me. The world has lowered itself in overflowing corruption. The governments of the people have risen like demons incarnated. And while they speak of peace, they prepare for war with the most devastating implements to destroy peoples and nations. Men have become ungrateful to my sacred heart and abusing my mercy have transformed the earth into a scene of crime. Numerous scandals are bringing souls to ruin particularly through the corruption of youth. Stirred up and unrestrained in the enjoyment of the pleasures of the world, they have degraded their spirit in corruption and sin. The bad example of parents trains the family in scandal and infidelity instead of virtue and prayer, which is almost dead on the lips of many. The stained and withered is the fountain of faith and sanctity the home. The wills of men do not change. They live in their obstinacy of sin. More severe are the scourges and, and calamities to recall them to the way of God, but still men become furious like wounded beasts and harden their hearts against the grace of God.
The world is no longer worthy of pardon, but only of fire, destruction, and death. There must be more prayers and penances from the souls faithful to me in order to appease the just wrath of God and to temper it, the just sentence of punishment, suspended on earth by the intercession of my blessed mother, who is also the mother of all men. Oh, how sad is my heart to see that men do not convert or respond to so many calls of love and grief manifested by my beloved mother to errant men. Roaming in darkness, they continue to live in sin and further away from God. But the scourge of fire is near to purify the earth of the iniquities of the wicked. The justice of God requires reparation for the many offenses and misdeeds that cover the earth and which can no longer be compromised. Men are obstinate in their guilt and do not return to God. The church is opposed and the priests are despised because of the bad ones who give scandal. Help me by suffering to repair for so many offenses and thus save at least in part humanity precipitated in a slow of corruption and death. Make it known to all men that repentant they must return to God and in doing so may hope for pardon and be saved from the just vengeance of a scorned God. In so saying, our Lord God disappeared. Then the Madonna appeared to me. She was dressed in black with seven swords piercing her immaculate heart. Coming closer with an expression of profound sorrow, with tears on her cheeks, she spoke to me saying, listen attentively and reveal to all. My heart is sad for many sufferings in an impending world and ruin. The justice of our father is most offended. Men live in their obstinacy of sin. The wrath of God is near. Soon the world will be afflicted with great calamities, revolutions, frightful hurricanes, and the overflowing of streams and seas. Cry out until the priests of God lend their ears to my voice, to advise men that the time is near at hand. And if men do not return to God with prayers and penances, the world will be overturned into a new and more terrible war. Arms most deadly will destroy peoples and nations. The dictators of the earth, specimens infernal, will demolish the churches and desecrate the Holy Eucharist, and will destroy things most dear. In this impious war, much will be destroyed of that which has been built by the hands of men. Clouds with lightning flashes of fire in the sky, and a tempest of fire shall fall upon the earth. This terrible scourge, never before seen in the history of humanity, will last seventy hours. Godless persons will be crushed and wiped out. Many will be lost because they remain in their, their obstinacy of sin. Then shall be seen the power of light over the power of darkness. Be not silent, my daughter, because the hours of darkness, of abandonment, are near. I am bending over the world, holding in suspension the justice of God. Otherwise, these things would have already come now to pass. Prayers and penances are necessary because men must return to God and to my immaculate heart the mediatrics of men to God, and thus the world will at, be at least in part saved. Cry out these things to all at the very echo of my voice. Let this be known to all, because it will help save my souls, and prevent much destruction in the church and in the world. Our message of Good Friday, April 8, 1955. The Blessed Mother, lovely and majestic, but with tears on her cheeks, spoke, my daughter, it is thy mother speaking to thee. Listen attentively and make known all that I tell thee, because men, in spite of repeated warnings, are not returning to God. They refuse grace and are not listening to my voice. You must have no doubt about what I am making known to you, because my words are very clear and you must transmit them all. Dark and frightful days are approaching. Mankind is obscured by a thick fog as a result of the many grievous sins, which are well nigh covering the whole earth. Today, more than ever, men are resisting the calls from heaven and are blaspheming God while wallowing in the mire of sin. My daughter, look upon my heart pierced by the thorns of so many sins. My face disfigured by sorrow, my eyes filled with tears. The cause of such great sadness is the sight of so many souls going to perdition because the church is wounded inwardly and outwardly. The rulers of nations make so much ado and speak of peace, but instead the whole world will soon be at war and all mankind will be plunged into sorrow because the justice of God will not be delayed in fulfilling its course. And these events are near. Tremendous will be the upheaval of the whole world because men, as at the time of the deluge, have lost God's way and are ruled by the spirit of Satan. Priests must unite by prayers and penance. They must hasten to spread the devotion to the two hearts. 
the hour of my triumph is close at hand. The victory will be accomplished through the love and mercy of the heart of my son and of my immaculate heart, the mediatrix between men and God. By accepting this invitation and by uniting their tears to those of my sorrowful heart, priests and religious will obtain great graces for the salvation of poor sinners. Launch forth into the world a message to make known to all that the scourge is near at hand. The justice of God is weighing upon the world. Mankind, defiled in the mire, soon will be washed in its own blood by disease, by famine, by earthquakes, by cloudbursts, tornadoes, floods, and terrible storms, by war. But men ignore all these warnings and are unwilling to be convinced that my tears are plain signs to serve notice that tragic events are hanging over the world and the hours of great trials are at hand. If men do not amend their ways, a terrifying scourge of fire will come down from heaven upon all nations of the world, and men will be punished according to the debts contracted with divine justice. There will be frightful moments for all because heaven will be joined with the earth, and all the ungodly people will be destroyed. Some nations will be purified, while others will disappear entirely. You are to transmit these warnings to all, in order that the new generation will know that men had been warned in time to turn to God by doing penance, and thus could have avoided these punishments. But when will all this come about? I asked her lady. My daughter asked the Blessed Mother that time is not far off, when men least expect it, the course of divine justice will be accomplished. My heart is so big for poor sinners, and I make use of every possible means that they may be converted. Look at this mantle, how big it is. If I were not bent over the earth to cover all with my material love, the tempest of fire would already be broken upon the nations of the world. Then I exclaimed, My lovely mother, never before have I seen thee with such a large mantle. The Blessed Virgin, holding her arms wide, answered, This is the mantle of mercy for all those who, having repented, come back to my immaculate heart. See, the right hand holds the mantle to cover and to save poor sinners, while with the left hand I hold back the divine justice, so that the time of mercy may still be prolonged. To help me in this, I ask that the prayer, Maternal Refuge, be spread as most useful means to obtain graces and salvation for poor sinners. Say often with your arms crossed, Queen of the universe, mediatrix of men to God, refuge to all our hopes, have mercy on us. Good Friday, April 7th, 1950. Sister Elena Aiello asks our Blessed Mother, What will become of Italy? Will Rome be saved? The Madonna answered, in part, by the Pope. The church will be in travail, but the forces of the pit cannot prevail. You must suffer for the Pope and Christ, and thus Christ will be safe on earth, and the Pope, with his redemptive word, will in part save the world. The Madonna then came closer, and with a sad expression, showed me the flames of hell, saying, Satan reigns and triumphs on earth. See how the souls are falling into the pit. See how high the flames are and the souls who fall into them like flakes of snow, looking like transparent embers. How many sparks, how many cries of hate and of despair, how much pain. See how many priestly souls look at the sign of their consecration in their transparent hands. In the palms of their hands, the sign of the cross and more vivid fire could clearly be seen. What torment, my daughter, in my maternal heart. Great is my sorrow to see that men do not change. The justice of the Father requires reparation, otherwise many will be lost. See how the great bear of the East will burn. Before my eyes there extended an immense field covered with flames and smoke in which souls were submerged as in a sea of fire. And all this fire, concluded Madonna, is not that which will fall from the hands of men, but will be hurled directly from the angels, the time of the great chastisement or purification that will come upon the earth. Therefore I ask prayers, penance, and sacrifice, so I may act as mediatrix for, for my son in order to save souls. Good Friday, March 23rd, 1961. The Madonna speaks. My daughter, the scourge is near. Much is spoken of peace, but all the world will soon be at war and the streets will be stained with blood. No gleam of light is seen in the world because men live in the darkness of error and the enormous weight of sin angers the justice of God. All nations will be punished because sin has spread all over the world. Tremendous will be the punishments because man has arrived at an insupportable contest with his God and Father and has exasperated his infinite goodness. My heart bleeds for Italy also, which will be safe only in part for the Pope. Oh, what grief to see the representative of Christ on earth hated, persecuted, outraged. 
He who is the spiritual father of the people, the defender of the faith and of truth, whose face radiant with light shines upon the world, is greatly hated. He who personifies Christ on earth, doing good for all, becomes thus outraged with impunity. Many iniquitous and wicked leaders of the people who live and drag along with them their people outside the laws of God, showing themselves in sheep's clothing while being rapacious wolves, have ruined society, stirring it up against God and his church. How can the world be saved from the disaster that is about to crash down upon misleading nations if man does not repent of his errors and failings? The only salvation is complete repentance and return to God and a true devotion to my Immaculate Heart, particularly in the daily recitation of my rosary. Once there was the chastisement by water, but if there is not a returning to God, there will come the chastisement by fire, which will cover the streets of the world with blood. My daughter, cry out loudly and let it be known to all that if they do not return to God, Italy too will only in part be safe for the Pope. My heart of mother and mediatrics of men close to the mercy of God invites with many manifestations and many signs the people to penance and to pardon, but they respond with a storm of hate, blasphemies, and sacrilegious profanations, as if blinded by an infernal rage. I wish prayers and penance in order that I may again obtain mercy and salvation for many souls, and otherwise they will be lost. Feast of the Immaculate Conception, December 8, 1956. Our Blessed Mother speaks. The world today is honoring me, but my motherly heart is bleeding because the enemy is at our doors. Men are offending God too much. If I were to show you the number of sins committed in a single day, you would die of horror and sorrow. The sins that distress God the most are those of the souls who should perfume the air with the fragrance of their virtues. Instead, they contaminate by their sinful lives those who come near them. The times are grievous. The whole world is in turmoil because it has become worse than at the time of the deluge. Everything is in suspense like a thread. When this thread breaks, the justice of God will fall like a thunderbolt and will complete its terrible course of purification. Sister Elena asks, what will become of Italy? Virgin Mother answered, Italy, my daughter, will be humiliated, purified in its blood, and must suffer much because many are the sins of this beloved country, seat of the vicar of Christ. You cannot imagine what will happen. In those sad days, there will be much anguish and weeping. There will be great revolution, and streets will be red with blood. The Pope will suffer much, and all the suffering will be like an agony, which will shorten his earthly pilgrimage. His successor will guide the boat in the tempest. However, the punishment of the impious will not be delayed. That day will be most fearful in the world. The earth will tremble. All humanity will be shaken. The wicked and the obstinate will perish in the tremendous severity of the justice of the Lord. Launch at once a message into the world to advise men to return to God by prayers and penance and to come with confidence to my immaculate heart. My intercession must be shown because I am the mother of God, of the just, and of sinners. Through prayer and penance, my mercy will be able to hold back the hand of God's justice. Prophecies of 1959 Jesus, dripping with blood and with painful and suffering looks, said, Do you wish to unite with me in agony? See how much I suffer. The sins of men have reduced me to this. But bitterness is poured into this heart, pierced by many souls, who instead of loving me with sacrifices and in flight from sinful vanities of the corrupted world, commit much iniquity. Help me to suffer by consoling my grieved heart and to make reparation for the many sins. Oh, my beloved bride, if you knew the pain that my heart suffers from the loss of so many souls. Satan travels victorious over all the earth. I need generous souls to appease the outraged justice of the Father because the world is headed for imminent ruin. The hours of darkness are near. Then the Madonna appeared to me, sad and shedding tears. She said, this great mantle which you see is the expression of my mercy for covering sinners and for saving them. Men instead cover themselves with even more filth and do not want to confess their real faults. Therefore, the justice of God will pass over the sinful world to purify humanity for so many sins, openly committed and hidden, especially those which corrupt youth. In order to save souls, I wish that there be propagated in the world the consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, mediatrics of men, devoted to the mercy of God and to the Queen of the universe. The world will once more be afflicted with great calamity, with bloody revolutions, with great earthquakes, with famines, with pestilence, with fearful hurricanes, and with floods from rivers and seas. But if men do not return to God, purifying fire will fall from the heavens like snowstorms on all peoples, and a great part of humanity will be destroyed. 
No longer do men speak according to the true spirit of the gospel. The immorality of the times has reached a peak, but men do not listen to my motherly warnings, so the world must soon be purified. The great bearer of the East will march upon all the nations of Europe, particularly Italy, and will raise her flag over the dome of St. Peter's. Italy will be so severely tried by great revolution, and Rome will be purified in blood for its many sins, especially those of impurity. The flock is about to be dispersed, and the Pope must suffer greatly. The only valid means for placating divine justice is to pray and do penance, returning to God with, with sincere sorrow for the faults committed, and then the chastisement of divine justice will be mitigated by mercy. Humanity will never find peace if it does not return to my immaculate heart as mother of mercy and mediatrix of men, and to the heart of my son Jesus. Good Friday, 1960. The Madonna speaks. How youth lives in perdition. How many innocent souls find themselves enwrapped in a chain of scandals. The world has become as flooded as a valley overflowing with filth and mud. Some of the most difficult trials of divine justice are yet to come before the deluge of fire. I, for a long time, have advised men in many ways, but they do not listen to my maternal appeals, and they continue to walk the paths of perdition. But soon terrifying manifestations will be seen, which will make even the most obdurate sinners tremble. Great calamities will come upon the world, which will bring confusion, tears, struggle, and pain. Great earthquakes will swallow up entire cities and countries, and will bring pestilence, famine, and terrible destruction, especially where the sons of darkness are. In these tragic hours, the world has need of prayers and penance because the Pope, the priest, and the church are in danger. If we do not pray, the great bear of the East will march upon all Europe, and particularly upon Italy, bringing much more ruin and havoc. Hence, the priests must be in the front line of defense of the church by example and sanctity in life, for materialism is breaking forth in all nations, and evil prevails over good. The rulers of the people do not understand this because they do not have the Christian spirit. In their blindness, they do not see the truth. In Italy, some leaders like rapacious wolves in sheep's clothing, while calling themselves Christian, open the door to materialism, and fostering dishonest actions will bring Italy to ruin, but many of them too will fall in confusion. Propagate the devotions to my immaculate heart of mother of mercy, mediatrix of men, who believe in the mercy of God and of the queen of the universe, and will manifest my partiality for Italy, which will be preserved from the fire, but the skies will be covered with dense darkness, and the earth will be shaken by fearful earthquakes, which will open deep abysses. Provinces and cities will be destroyed, and all will cry out that the end of the world has come. Even Rome will be punished according to justice for its many and serious sins, because here sin has reached its peak. Pray and lose no time, lest it be too late, since dense darkness surrounds the earth and the enemy is at the doors. Feast of the Immaculate Heart, August 22nd, 1960. The Madonna speaks. The hour of justice of God is close and will be terrible. Tremendous scourges are impending over the world, and various nations are struck by, by pestilence, famines, great earthquakes, terrible hurricanes with overflowing rivers and seas, which bring ruin and death. The people do not recognize in these scourges of nature the warnings of divine mercy and do not return to God with truly Christian living. Another terrible war will come from the east to the west. The great bear of the east or their secret armies will battle America, will overrun Europe. The river Rhine will be overflowing with corpses and blood. Italy also will be harassed by a great revolution and the Pope will suffer terribly. Spread the devotion to my immaculate heart in order that many souls may be conquered by my love and that many sinners may return to my maternal heart. Do not fear, for I will accompany with my maternal protection my faithful ones and all those who accept my urgent warnings, and they, especially by the recitations of my rosary, will be saved. Satan goes furiously through this disordered world and soon will show all his might, but because of my immaculate heart, the triumph of light will not delay in its triumph over the power of darkness, and the world finally will have tranquility and peace. Good Friday, 1961. The Sorrowful Madonna Speaks. People pay no attention to my motherly warnings, and thus the world is falling headlong evermore into an abyss of iniquity. Nations shall be convulsed by terrible disasters, causing destruction and death. Great Bear of the East, spurred on by Satan, will seek to dominate the whole world, and by bloody revolutions will propagate her false teachings throughout all the nations, especially in Italy. The church will be persecuted, and the Pope and the priest shall suffer much. Sister Elena Aiello speaks. Oh, what a terrible vision I see. Great revolution is going on in Rome. They are entering the Vatican. The Pope is all alone. He's praying. They're holding the Pope. They take him by force. They knock him to the floor. They're tying him. 
Oh God, oh God, they are kicking him. What a horrible scene. How dreadful. Our blessed mother is drawing near. Like bodies, those evil men fall down to the floor. Our lady helps the Pope to his feet, and taking him by the arm, she covers him with her mantle, saying, Fear not. Flagstaffs, flying the red flag over St. Peter's Dome and elsewhere, collapse and power is gone out of the clubs of those evil brutes. The, the atheists are ever shouting, We don't want God to rule over us. We want Satan to be our master. Our Blessed Mother speaks again. My daughter, Rome will not be saved because the Italian rulers have forsaken the divine light and because only a few people really love the church. But the day is not far off when all the wicked shall perish under the tremendous blows of divine justice. And those were the prophecies of Sister Elena Aiello and her messages from heaven. I am curious what you think about this. If you think this applies to today, I did have to swap a few words out here and there because of the sensibilities of this place. Many of them apply to international headlines these days. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. I try to present a We Were Warned video about once a month, although for the last year or so, I held off because it things have become going taking on a new life, especially the, the, the news of the past week. Think about that, the news out of the consistory. The events of the past week really were eye-opening and really point to the hierarchy bringing this upon us. But anyway, let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.